Income tax, 2023-2024. Maker's depreciation. Which depreciation method applies? Get ready and some coffee because we'll need to handle a little perspiration if we want to get through the income tax preparation, 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and More, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income here having income income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Remembering the Schedule C basically rolls into line one income of the formula. The sole proprietorship Schedule C, however, also basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses, which could also be thought of as business deductions resulting in, in essence, net business income, which is what rolls in from the Schedule C to line one income of the formula. The formula outlining the calculation on the Form 1040, of which we have page one here, Schedule C ultimately rolling into line eight. Additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1, Additional Income and Adjustments to Income, Part 1. Schedule C, roll it into Line 3, Business Income or Loss. This is the Schedule C, Profit or Loss from Business, Income Statement Format, Income Minus Expenses. We're on the expenses side of things, usually having the most different categories within it. Some expenses more complex than others depreciation as we have seen in prior presentations even if we're using a cash based system being a more complex expense due to the fact that the tax code forces us to deviate from the cash based system to an accrual based thing putting the book the expense or the item purchased on the books not as an expense but as an asset we don't have a balance sheet and therefore that asset will be reported possibly on depreciation schedules representing the balance sheet asset account of the uh, fixed assets, property, plants, and equipment, as well as the contra asset account of accumulated depreciation and calculate the current period's depreciation, which will be recorded not as equipment expense, but as depreciation expense noting this accrual concept like many things in the business realm is being taken from by the tax code generally accepted accounting principles or basically accrual accounting concepts that's what the normal makers depreciation basically is then the tax code distorts stuff such as putting the 179 and special depreciation on top of that possibly allowing us to in essence expense the whole thing at the point of purchase which defeats the point of putting it on the books as depreciable property in the first place. But we talked about that in prior presentations. Now we're looking at the heart of it, which is basically the maker's depreciation, the solid depreciation, which will probably be sticking around for a longer period of time, given the fact that it's based on actual accounting principles rather than, you know, political haggling, such as the 179 and special depreciations. All right, given that, uh, we're looking at the maker's depreciation, which depreciation method applies. Makers provides three depreciation methods under GDS and one depreciation method under ADS. So in other words, we talked about the difference between GDS and ADS, noting most of the time 
we're thinking makers and we're basically defaulting to like GDS uh, depreciation unless we have to do the ADS in part because you could elect to do the ADS from the GDS, but it usually has longer depreciation periods and therefore we would be most beneficial to use the kind of defaults most of the time, which are the GDS. Now, if you're using the GDS, then the question is, well, what's the method that we're going to be using? Should it be the major methods we think of by default? Straight line method. Do I just depreciate it evenly over the time frame, or some type of accelerated method, which is usually a double declining balance? Now, note there's a couple things just to keep in mind in terms of terminology. When we're thinking about depreciation, what do we need to know? We need to know how long we're going to depreciate it over and we need to know how we're going to deal with a hat with the partial year when we purchase the depreciation as, as well as the end point of depreciation or when we sell it. And uh, we're, we're going to need to know the method that we're going to use. So we talked about the class of property in prior presentations, which helps us to determine the number of years it will be depreciated over for most pieces of equipment, three, five or seven years, for example. We talked about the convention that will be used. In other words, if I purchase it in the current year, it's not going to be exactly on January. Therefore, there's not going to be a full year of depreciation. So there's going to have to be a first year and last year convention fraction of a year, which would be either the half year convention or mid year convention, uh, whichever you want to call it, the mid quarter convention and the mid month convention. Then once we have that, we need to know how we're going to calculate the depreciation. The default being a straight line method, which would depreciate evenly over the life, easy to calculate, but uh, the accelerated depreciation would give us more benefit. So if we can get an accelerated depreciation, like a double declining, we would typically want to default uh, to that. And that's usually what happens under many of the maker settings. All right. So the 200% declining balance method over a GDS recovery period, you might hear that again called like a double declining method, depreciating more upfront is basically what is happening uh, in the period. The 150 declining balance method over a GDS recovery period. Now that's less common, but the concept is the same. In other words, straight line method would be even over the life. And then a double declining would have a, a lot more depreciated in the first years than the last years. And then in the middle would be a 150 still accelerated from a straight line, but not as accelerated as the double declining or 200%. The straight line method over a GDS recovery period. Now, this is another instance where the, the, the they're basically showing these kind of in reverse order as you would think of them conceptually. In other words, conceptually, the first method you would think of is straight line, even allocation. And then probably the most second most common method is double declining, meaning you're going to accelerate more upfront and then 50% is kind of in the middle. That's how I would think of it in my mind. But the most common method used in the tax code is probably going to be double declining or 200% because many times they allow you to do that. And if you're allowed to take the double declining, you would, but usually, but conceptually, it's useful to think about how it relates to straight line because that's the easiest convention to understand uh, mentally. So the straight line method over an ADS recovery period. So same concept straight line method. The ADS, however, might have a different recovery period. In other, in other words, number of years you're going to recover over, usually it being longer if you used ADS versus GDS, which is why you don't usually do that if you don't have to. Depreciate methods for farm property. Remember that farm property has oftentimes its own rules. It can seem kind of funny if you're not used to it, applying depreciation to like animals and stuff. I'm not, I'm not totally used to, <laughs> to that. It seems weird to me, but uh, obviously, you know, so if you're specializing in farming, then that could be a great specialization area to do because it has different kind of rules applying to it. If you're not specialized in those areas, Make sure that you do the research if you pick up clients that are in, say, farming, for example. 
So if you place personal property in service in a farming business after 1988 and before uh, 2018, you must generally depreciate it under GDS using the 150% declining balance method unless you are a farmer who must depreciate the property under ADS using the straight line method or you elect to depreciate the property under GDS or ADS using the straight line method. You can depreciate real property using the straight line method under either GDS or ADS note. For uh, three, five, seven, or 10 year property used in a farming business or placed in service after 2017 in tax years ending after 2017, the 150 declining balance method is no longer required. However, the 150% declining balance method will continue to apply to any 15 or 20 year property used in a farming business to which the straight line method does not apply or to property for which you elect the use of the 150 declining balance method. All right, fruit or nut trees and vines. Another one that seems a little bit funny to kind of like apply depreciation methods too, because I usually think of like equipment, but obviously would be important for certain uh, places. So depreciate, depreciate trees and vine bearing fruits or nuts under GDS using the straight line method over a recovery period of 10 years. So they're gonna make us use the straight line method as opposed to the accelerated double declining method. ADS required for some farmers. So uh, if you elect not to apply the uniform capitalization rules to any plant produced in your farming business, you must use ADS. You must use ADS for all property you place in service in any year the election is in effect. See the regulations under Section 263A of the Internal Revenue Code for information on the uniform capitalization rules that apply to farm property. Electing a different method. As shown in Table 4-1, you can elect a different method for depreciation for certain types of property. You must make the election by the due date of the return, including extensions for year you place the property in service. So in other words, you know, you might have the, the default method that you might use and then make an election to use some other method in uh, some instances. Now, oftentimes, if you're looking at many pieces of of the property and the depreciation method that's kind of like the default method that you would use that might be the best method or the one most often used because it usually results in the most depreciation up front which is why it might be the default method but you can imagine some situations where you wouldn't want to depreciate more up front possibly because you think your income is lower these years than they will be in later years and because of the progressive income tax system you think that your depreciation will be better spent in future years where you will have higher income and therefore the deductions will be worth more because of the progressive income tax system however if you timely filed your return for the year without making the election, you can still make the election by filing an amended return within six months of the due date. So remember that depreciation is one of those things. You would like to apply the adage of measure twice, cut once. I'm going to repeat that over and over again because I've dealt with many times very messed up depreciation schedules, which it might have been a little bit easier to do at the point in time they put the stuff on the books but the fact that it's messed up really messes things up down the line when you're trying to dispose of property because you can't identify it or if the depreciation methods being elected are incorrect and you have to kind of think about, well, what do I do with that here? Can I go back and amend it? That's going to be difficult to do because the calculation is applied to multiple periods in the future. So you'd like to get it right the first time. So attach the uh, election to the amended return and write, quote, filed pursuant to section 301.9100-2, end quote, on the election statement and so on. Caution. So if you elect to use a different method for one item in a property class, you must apply the same method to all property in that class placed in service during the year of the election. So in other words, you're saying, here's my class of property for whatever reason, I want to remove from the from the default method to use some other method. If, if you do that, you have to be careful because you might not be able to do it 
property by property, piece by piece, but possibly have to apply the same method to all the property that was purchased that year, which could influence kind of your decision making on, on whether to use that, uh, that approach or not. So however, you can make the election on a property by property basis for non-residential real and residential property. Now that kind of makes sense to me because you would think the residential property or the, the, the real estate is very large. So you would think making an election on each individual piece of real estate might be uh, more appropriate, uh, but that's the idea. But in any case, that's the rule. So 150% election. So instead of using the 200% declining balance method over the GDS recovery period for property in the three, five, seven, or 10 year property class, you can elect to use the 150 declining balance method. So again, you don't normally do that because, and by the way, three, seven, three, five, seven, ten. Those are the recovery periods of most kind of equipment for small businesses. So that's the most common one where you would use makers typically, and the default would be a double declining or 200% declining balance method. So they're saying you could elect 150 declining balance method, which is going a step more towards the straight line method, right? But it's in the middle, but you usually wouldn't want to do that because the general rule for us is to take that potential deduction, the potential energy of the basis and depreciate as much upfront as we can, getting the benefit as soon as possible in part due to the time value of money. But you might say again, well, maybe I'm gonna make more money in the future and because of the progressive tax system, the deductions will be worth more later. So maybe I don't want the 200% upfront, but rather just 150% and have more to deduct later. So make the election by entering quote 150 DB, so 150 double, uh, d double declining balance under column F in part three of form 4562. Straight line election, instead of using either the 200% or the 150% declining balance method over the GDS recovery period, you can elect to use the straight line method over the GDS recovery period. So whatever the recovery period is, whether it be five, seven, ten, three, instead of using the default double declining, depreciating more in the first year than the latter years, you could use the middle one, 150, it's kind of in the middle, or go down to straight line, which means you depreciate an even amount of depreciation over the life of the property. Uh, although, of course, again, there's a mid-year convention or something like that in the first year, uh, and so you can make that election, same kind of rationale. You wouldn't generally want to do that unless for some reason you would. So <laughs> election of ADS, as explained earlier, under which depreciation system GDS or ADS applies, you can elect to use ADS uh, even though your property may come under GDS. So in other words, again, usually we want the GDS depreciation. That's going to help us to determine the classes under GDS, which usually have a shorter useful life, uh, which means we're going to depreciate more upfront. But we might elect to use the ADS for a similar rationale. We might be saying, I think my income is going to be going up and up and up over the years into the future because of the progressive tax system. I'm going to have a more of a benefit of the deduction in the future than I do now because I have lower tax brackets or something like that. Not a common thing to do, but possibly it could, you, you could do it. You would think, I would think it would be more common to elect to go from like, like the double declining to a straight line or something like that, rather than going from the GDS to an ADS, which is a little bit kind of a messier move, but you could do that. So ADS uses the straight line method of depreciation over fixed ADS recovery periods. So now it's going to force you using this ADS uses a straight line rather than the double declining and the recovery periods are different. So most ADS recovery periods are listed in appendix B or see the table under recovery periods under ADS, which we talked about before. Make the election by completing line 20 of part three of form 4562. 
15 or 20 year farm property back to the farm stuff. Instead of using the 150% declining balance method over a GDS recovery period for 15 to 20 year property you use in a farming business other than real property, you can elect the depreciation it using either the following methods the straight line method over a GDS recovery period or the straight line method over the ADS recovery period. Both using the same method as you can see, but the recovery periods will be different under the two methods you would think generally oftentimes and usually the ADS recovery periods are longer, which is why you don't usually choose those if you don't have to unless you have some rationale for, for it.